Hey, what's going on? My name is Eric Worrell, and in this video, I'm going to be putting together a comprehensive guide to help you purchase the best inflatable kayak for your needs. Now, what you can see on the screen right here is a table of contents, because if you're anything like me, I like seeing everything up front and know what I'm getting into. And as we go through this, the purpose of this video is not necessarily to push you on a certain kayak, but to inform you on what's available, what's out there when you're making a decision. And then I'm also going to just be going through and showing you everything from inflating the kayaks to getting out on the water, maintenance, uh, what to consider as far as different types of categories. And we're going to be getting into all of that in this video. Before we get too far into this video, I want to be transparent and upfront that the three kayaks that you're going to see throughout this video that I'm demoing are all from Driftsun. They did send them to me for free for this review. Uh, I'm not going to be pushing you on their brand throughout this video. I'm really using them to establish the three different types of categories that you're going to want to consider when purchasing a kayak. And as we're talking about those, those three different kayaks are the Voyager, which is kind of meant for your recreational touring around on like a flat lake or maybe a mild creek. Then in the middle here, you have the Almanor 146. This one is designed for families or maybe you have a significant other and a pet that you want to take out in the water. So it's kind of like more your uh, party barge, I guess you could call it. And then on the left here, uh, we have the Rover 220. This one you can take out into mild ocean surf. You can go whitewater kayaking down a river with it. It has self-draining plugs, which are pretty neat. So let's get to it. But before we get into everything, let's start with an unboxing of one of the kayaks just so you can see all the different equipment that's included when you're purchasing it because we're gonna be talking about each of these items throughout the video. All right, let's get to it. All right, so here I wanted to do an unboxing. So we're gonna go through everything really quick and sped up here so we can talk about it later. Uh, that's a child seat because what we're showing right now is the Almanor 146, that's the family kayak. Uh, here you can see the adult seats. These are standard amongst the three kayaks that I'm gonna be showing in the video. Uh, but we're gonna be going into more detail on all of these later on. Uh, this is a dual action pump. That's something you wanna consider for ease of use or blowing a kayak up. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about the paddle that you just saw. You wanna make sure that you got a uh, adjustable paddle so you can adjust the feather to your needs. And then what we're looking at here is the backpack that comes with this. Uh, this is something you're going to want to consider when buying an inflatable kayak, because if you're looking to really kind of travel with it and go some distances, you want to make sure that it's pretty portable. So that's everything can be put into that backpack, uh, which is pretty nice. So now we're looking at actually unfolding the Almanor 146. So you can get a look at what it looks like when it's all unfolded and you get to this point of actually pumping it up. One of the things I love about an inflatable kayak is the portability of it. As you can see, I can fit everything in my bike trailer. So again, with a time-lapse video, I'm going to speed this up for you, but from putting this bag down and pumping up the Voyager kayak, this took just over 10 minutes. Uh, one of the things I want to highlight though is the dual action pump that I talked about. So what that means is when you're pushing and pulling, it is pumping up. So you're really 2xing how quickly you can pump up your kayak. I'm going to do a close up of the Boston valves and kind of give you an idea of what that looks like uh, inside of the kayak here so you know what we're looking at. And when you're pumping these up, each kayak is going to have its own PSI. This particular one has a max PSI of two for the sidewalls and one for the base. Uh, and then what I'm going to be doing here is launching out in the water, but I want to do a close up of the skeg or skag here. So this fin is on the bottom of the boat. I just wanted to highlight this. It's called a skag, sometimes a skag. Uh, this is for improving the directional stability of the kayak. Out in the water by myself for the first time really enjoying it it's like 6 30 in the morning uh, it's really awesome being able to have a deflated kayak be able to get through a bike trail using the uh the bike trailer and gonna enjoy the next 45 minutes of solitude and just birds chirping and the sun rising So a concern you may have is the safety of the kayak. How is it going to hold up uh, capacity in that? Uh, so my dad's going to talk to that right here. Uh, and then we're going to talk about um, capacity for the three different kayaks that we're looking at uh, here in just a moment. What do you think? It spins on a dime. It's very easy. It's very comfortable. I'll tell you, the other thing is, I feel very, very safe. I mean, I don't I mean, yeah, could you if you were standing up go over, but it's like, it feels very, very safe. And as uh, you know, I'm a big guy. 
And yes, I'm about 240 pounds, and I feel very comfortable with this. So uh, I think one of the concerns with a inflatable kayak is punctures, right? Uh, with this, uh, the bottom of the kayak, and I'm probably screwed up, is like a tarpaulin, uh, which is uh, meant to be more puncture proof. Uh, but I've been out in the water this morning for, I don't know, maybe about 45 minutes, <laughs> probably on a creek that I shouldn't be on necessarily because I've hit, I don't know, probably like six rocks, but I'm also not familiar with the creek uh, that I'm on. Uh, but no issues right now. I can't tell you what it'll look like if I hit 600 of those over time. Um, but really just kind of like almost like you're pulling up on a beach on sand so far. I've like either rubbed off of like a rock or I just hit it and I get stuck and then I kind of climb around it and keep going. So uh, this is kind of fun for me because I'm new to kayaking. Uh, it's a little bit of an adventure I'm sure to somebody who's done this a bunch. Like they're like, yeah, that's just kayaking. But to me, it's really fun. I think uh, doing something new, something different, you know. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Comment below with your questions. I'm sure there's gonna be people watching this with far more knowledge than I have. So uh, I love when those people chime in and kind of give their insights, because I learn from that stuff too. So uh, yeah, guys, uh, let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, the links are in the description below. I uh, really appreciate it, help support my channel. So I gotta go, because I got a little uh, wood stick coming up. All right, see ya. <laughs>so at this point in the video i'd like to talk about specifications again i can't go through every single inflatable kayak out there so i'm going to highlight the three that we're showing in this video because you may think about things that maybe you weren't thinking of such as what is the capacity for the kayak so the one my dad was just modeling is the voyager uh the hull weight that just means how much it actually weighs is 27 pounds uh, but as far as capacity you can get two people or up to 450 pounds on the kayak so so that means for a lot of people, you could probably get two people on there and a cooler, uh, so you have a pretty good amount of space. But again, if you're looking for something a little bit uh, with more load capacity, you'd have to be looking at the Almanor 146, where it's the family kayak that we highlighted, where you can go up to 600 pounds, or potentially the Rover 220 Whitewater Touring Kayak, which can go up to 600 pounds and two people as well. So as we were looking at the specs before, the Rover 220 is gonna have much higher PSI. It's gonna glide a little bit easier in the water. I did run both of these across Green Lake here and the uh, Rover did come in about seven seconds quicker in probably the least scientific study ever. As far as storage, what we're looking at here is the Almanor 146. Again, that's the family kayak. That's on an 18 inch depth shelf with plenty of room to spare. You can notice that the paddles are on the right there and they're still uh, set up completely, but those can be broken down into three pieces as well. Now we're looking here, we have the Rover 220. You can store your kayak fully inflated if you'd like, uh, that's fine, uh, but just be aware that you don't want it in extreme heat and you don't want it being exposed to sunlight for long periods of time. So if you're gonna store it like this, just make sure that it's not exposed to sunlight. What I'm showing you here is the, uh, the center button here. You can actually twist this paddle. The blades on the end now are actually off center from each other, not parallel. So when you twist it again, you can make them parallel to one another. And then if you uh, pop the uh, button again, you can make it so that they go in the other direction. The reason for this is it's really personal preference. How do you want the paddle in your hand when you're paddling? Um, it's just really up to you and what feels comfortable on your wrist. But this is another thing to keep in mind is that the uh, paddles can break down easily so they're easily transportable, but also do they have the ability to adjust so that you can uh, use them to your style and preferred preference for your wrist. So I uh, just finished up here. Uh, I'm actually gonna carry this out. I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna carry it out because I found that uh, when it's fully inflated, it's actually easiest to carry. Uh, and then I'm gonna pack it all up uh, back by my bike and show you how to deflate everything and what that looks like. All right, see you in a bit. All right, for this, what we wanna do is take this off because we don't need this anymore and it's gonna block this from deflating. So that just comes out right there. And then we're gonna put this on the deflate side. 
You can see how it says deflate inflate there. All right. And then we're gonna get to the back end of this right here. So I gotta give a shout out to uh, Matt Volk at Drift Sun because I was bothering him saying that their PSI reader didn't work. It was because I had it at the end of the hose, not next to the actual pump. So when you do install that PSI reader, uh, it needs to be right next to the handle, not at the end of the hose. Uh, so now let's speed this video up and I'm gonna show you how to deflate this uh, in quick time. So what we're gonna do here is unscrew those Boston valves that we showed earlier in the video. And uh, these valves are different actually on the Rover 220. I'll show you how those work here on screen as well. Uh, with those, you just have to push down on a pin that's gonna release air. But then the um, you can see how the dual action pump now is deflating and getting all the air out of the kayak here. And uh, once we uh, get all, most of all the air out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in on itself, kind of like a hot dog bun, uh, if you can picture it like that before we end up rolling it up. But here you can see uh, kind of making it into a little bit of a hot dog bun, just kind of rolling it up. And you can see there's some grass clippings and whatnot on it right now, that's fine. I just needed to get it home because uh, I was gonna clean it at home. Uh, some people, if you're going out on a creek, uh, what they'll do is they'll bring like a couple towels with them to towel everything down uh, before transporting it. And I'm I'm sure that's something I'll get better at with more use of this product. Uh, but what we'll do next is we'll get it back to the house and we'll get it cleaned up and show you that. So this is probably some of the worst framing I did on any of my recordings here, but hey, this is YouTube. I'm not a professional videographer. Uh, but yeah, once you get your kayak, if you want, you can just wash it down with a hose, let it dry out, get both sides, let it air dry, and then you can store it away. And like I said earlier in the video, don't let it sit out in the sun for days on end. Uh, they're not supposed to get that kind of sun exposure, but once it's all set up, you can pack it away. So like I said, for me, the Voyager, uh, I like, I think it's one of the best kayaks under 500 bucks. Uh, but uh, yeah, it all depends on what you need, what you're looking for. Uh, but hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, in the description below, I have links to these that you can buy them on Amazon. I appreciate it if you use my links. And uh, yeah, enjoy your time out there and I hope you find the right kayak for your needs. All right, take care. Hey buddy, do you like kayaking or Elmo? Elmo. Yeah, I thought so. That's okay. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that, huh? <laughs> Come on, you guys ready? Come on, when's the last time you were in a kayak? <laughs>